What's going on, everybody? Sorry for the technical difficulties, had to move. Believe it or not, Mother Nature was so hot, she actually like heated up the technology. So I had to move to another side of the building and let's see if I can actually get Dan back. For all those who waited, thank you. What's happening, Jess? Let's see if we can get Dan back in here. Yeah, man. Wow. There he is. I just sent him a request. You know, crazy. I can't be mad, though. It's so hot outside. Maybe the interview, that's how it goes. The interview was going so well. They were like, hold up, man. You guys are heating up the internet. You're going to break it. Dan, you should have a request in there. Oh, there he is. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Yeah, my little window spot. Too hot for him. Dan will be joining us any second now. I just sent him an invite and requested his. For those who are watching, man, this was interview it was going incredible. And it's going to go incredible as soon as I get Dan back in here. But man, it was in the record books. There it is. <laughs> we no. broke it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? It was going so well. I was just saying, like, they, they were like, hold up, man. This is that. It, it, that's okay. What we'll do in TV is we'll just go past it. If we pretend it never happened, it never happened, man. So it's for all good. For so sure. we're talking. So we were talking about the DeQuinder cut, yada, yada. We were talking about how, like, that was really an influential spot. And uh, you were talking about how, like, really it was important to you. Like, I mean, it was kind of cool to go back there uh, when you started the first murals in the market and really do something in a place that was so instrumental in, like, your upbringing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the market itself, you know, just being instrumental in my upbringing, just, ha you know, having gone there so much as a kid and, you know, just as a weekend thing to do and just kind of a place that I always had, like, you know, a good feeling associated to it. But then in, you know, my teens and stuff going down there and really exploring it for the art side and the graffiti side and what was happening down there, um, you know, and it, it was just like such an amazing place and experience to connect with all the people that I, I did over the years down there um and relationships i made and and then to bring it back full circle and when we had the opportunity to do the, the mural festival in easter market i mean it was just like this full circle moment that's like here we're bringing these legal public art to the whole face of the you know eastern market and kind of changing the landscape there when really you know 15 20 years ago like people were painting graffiti right down there nobody even knew it you know and that's how a lot of the uh, the entire movement got started, you know what I mean? So it was really, really cool and really special place for us to kind of have, have done it, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah. But let's back, let's, we're going to come back to that, but let's back it up a little more. How, you know, you talked about going to CCS. So, you know, you're, you're a local from here. How cool was it to go, be able to go to like such a, a, an amazing art, a place of art, you know, school in your hometown did that play into like really your future plans on staying in Detroit and, you know, doing your thing here? Or was there, you know, were you thinking I might leave here at, at any time? No, I mean, you know, it definitely shaped a lot of my life and um, kind of future having gone there, you know, and the experiences that came out of there. It's like the, the relationships, the things I learned, um, you know, it was such a huge part, but, you know, at, some point like I saw a lot of people that I knew leave the city and go for other opportunities and just I don't know my roots have always been here you know my family's been here for a hundred years in the city of Detroit and um, I just never I always thought there was something really special about it and kind of seeing it at the lowest point and growing up in the lowest point and and having the other side where like hearing my great grandma's stories about what the city used to be like like i always saw that hope and kind of like vision of what it could be again you know and that's what really um 
kind of kept me here, I think, you know, and really never thought about going outside of here to, to find my opportunity or what my life is going to be. You know, I always knew that Detroit was going to be a part of it. Um, so then, yeah, I mean, like just being down at CCS, I remember the literally the first class I went into um, and sat down, the guy I sat down next to started drawing graffiti in a black book and ended up being uh, syntax. So it was like <laughs> my first experience, first classroom setting, <laughs> not having any idea what to expect and here i sit down next to another writer and you know it's like from from there it was i knew it was going to be uh amazing you know yeah man so you you're hanging out with jesse and like now you guys are are, are you know connected and getting to know each other how do we get from that to 323 was that the next step or what you know what happened between you know what got you to 323 yeah, it was a little break in there. I mean, me and Jesse worked together on this graffiti documentary that, um, you know, never it never ended up coming out to the public, um, you know, just for kind of uh, internal reasons. But we worked together at this company for, uh, you know, a couple of years and built a nice relationship. And, you know, the, he went his way. I went my way. Got a job at the, uh, the Detroit News and Free Press doing like online ads for them for a little bit. And I remember at lunch, uh, I think it was like F. McNally's or something, running into yeah. Jesse. Um, and it was like, yo, I, you know, how you been, whatever. And we, we linked up again. It was probably, you know, two or three years had gone by. And he was running his own company. Um, and I started helping him do some freelance projects out of his living room. And eventually it turned into like, okay, you know, we're doing a lot of business and um, I ended up getting a job at Team Detroit, the advertising agency after that. Um, so I was going to the ad agency and then going over his place at night to do these projects, building websites for people, um, things like that, you know, doing design. And eventually we needed an office space and found one um, in Royal Oak. You know, we thought it'd be a great – the place we found was like the, had the perfect little sliver of a uh, front like retail kind of space and then an office in the back. So we really only needed the office in the back, but we thought, you know, we know all these artists, all, they're all our friends, like I'm an artist, let's open up a little shop in the front to have a little retail component because there's so many people walking downtown Royal Oak. Um, we'll have this little retail component there and we'll do our thing in the, in the back and, you know, we'll just have this little thing. And we started screen printing t-shirts and doing festivals and um, you know, we called it 323 East and we, we did movement and we did arts, beats and eats and we would stay up all night screen print t-shirts and get a bunch of gear and uh, little art trinkets and things from our friends and take them to the festivals. And, and all this while you guys are still working other jobs at the time, you know, yeah. you guys hadn't broke off yet. You guys are no. doing all this stuff, but you're still holding down a corporate gig, you yeah. know, like, and I'm sure at that time. In your mind, you're like, what am I doing right now? When was there, what was your oh shit moment? You were like, we got to get out of here. Like, we're doing so much business on the other side. You know, it's time to cut bait with what this world, you know, when did that moment happen? Yeah. Well, I mean, 323 East, we did, we had that gallery for almost five years. And that was, just, it was really like a labor of love for us. We didn't make any money doing 323 East. It was like, we love, doing the shows and doing the events and connecting with the artists. And it's not like there was ever the, um, you know, we had any illusions about us getting rich selling art out of that little space. It was more, I think, for the fun and we just love doing it, you know? Um, and it wasn't until we created One Time Run that we really had that moment. And One Time Run was kind of born out of, okay, we're buying prints online ourselves. We're doing these gallery shows when we give away a, you know, a free print or something, people line up before the show opens to get in. So we knew there's this market um, there and we knew it was a bad experience trying to buy prints online from somebody. The sites would break and it was just a disaster, you know? So we were building websites, we were doing art and we thought, you know, let's build a better website to make prints and we'll put our own little game kind of spin on them and create a limited uh, supply and demand for everybody, not just for somebody that actually had it, you know, at a huge level. And, you know, we started selling them. We were doing one drop a week and 
pretty soon we were selling it out. We had nothing to sell for another six days. So we're like, we got to do another one. Let's schedule another run in there. So we did. And eventually we started doing so much that me and Jesse kind of looked at each other and were like, okay, like, I think it's time. And, um, you know, he, he kind of dropped his clients and wrapped that business up and I quit my job and we just have been doing it full time for the last seven or eight years now. So it's been, it's been amazing. It was a slow build. I mean, we, we did it for five years without, you know, putting a dime in our pocket basically, um, to get to that point where we finally could and, um, you know, uh, take the plunge. So it was definitely a scary time, but it was so exciting to, to do it. And, you know, I think we're still here after 10 years. So it's, I think we made the right move. Nah, man, you guys were, you know, definitely two things out of that conversation that I take away that is incredibly Detroit about all of it is mixed use. So you guys got this building to be your office. And the first thing I think all Detroiters do is we think, what, can, what else can we do with this? You know what I mean? We don't look at it and see an office. We see a potential art gallery, potential music venue. And that's what Detroiters do. And the other thing is fixing things that are broken. Like you said, you sat back and you said, it's incredibly hard to get our, our online. Like, let's not figure out how to work within their construct. Let's build our own, man. And those are two things that are incredibly Detroit. And so I, I admire that. That's one of the, those, those are just two of the things I admire about you guys are being pioneers of doing it. Because like I said, I've been around since day one, man. I've been at, I was at 323 East taking notes on you guys. And I was like, they're going to be stars one day, man. And I need to be a part of that universe. So now you guys are at 323 East and you're starting to outgrow the space. What's the next move? Because after that, you guys moved to the Gratiot spot. Yeah. I mean, we were, if, if anyone saw kind of the level of uh, like shipping and fulfillment and um, things we were doing out of that little, like couple hundred <laughs> square foot back office, they wouldn't have believed, you know, we were doing what we were doing out of there and we made it last until we could not fit or move around anymore. We, we called it the backroom boogaloo because you'd have to like dance around people just to get to your desk or to get something. And it was crazy, you know? So we started looking for spots. And at that time we were like, you know, we've always believed in Detroit. We get, we had this gallery in Royal Oak cause we wanted to, there wasn't foot traffic um, down in downtown Detroit back then. It just, didn't exist. We didn't have a network of collectors. Like we don't come from that world. So, um, you know, the online component was really great for us because we were able to reach people all over the world from wherever we're at. At that point, we're like, we need to go back downtown um, and be a part of the story and everything that's happened. And um, we found that perfect place out on Gratiot there uh, in the market. And it was, you know, the best kind of move we could have ever made. And at that point, we kind of had a decision to, like, keep 323 three East and carry that brand on or create a new experience. And we're like, let's just kind of – 323 three East was its own thing and its own set of memories attached to that space and that brand. And we're just going to, you know, we're going to grow. We're going to create Interstate Gallery. And we're really just going to kind of ramp up one time run and what we're doing with that. And, um you know, we did. We opened the gallery. We ended up having a residency there. We had a studio, the basement. I mean, it was like the all-in-one retail production, artist in residency, uh, place that really became kind of our launch pad for the mural festival and everything else that we're doing in the city. So that place was really special. You know, it became a big hub for artists all over the world would fly in there and show up and knock on the door and um you know we'd have artists staying at the house and staying with this person and they'd be they'd be like all right we're staying for the next month you know um and it was just so crazy all the things that happened from day to day being down there um and really having that retail kind of open space that people would come and just do their thing you know? now it really was a premium spot i mean right on the corner you know like it was lit I remember going and there'd be a line down the block to get in there. And it just, it felt like old Detroit that we knew, you know, like when we came up and, cause there had, in my opinion, been sort of a lull in like creative stuff that was really going down like that. And all of a sudden it's like, bam. So you guys are doing your thing. And then I keep saying, and then this is next. And then this is next. Like it just happened that way. 
but it really, I mean, so when does the idea or the conversation of murals in the market even begin to happen? It, you know, you guys are right there in the market. It, did it come out of the fact that we're here in the market or did you guys say, you know what, like I have crazy ass ideas and I'm like, let's just do it. I mean, what was the first conversation about that about? You know, the conversation happened over a longer period of time than just kind of when we got to the market. I mean, we were doing, sure, we started place. doing murals on three, two, three on the side. And that's really like the first place we yep, started yep. doing them. But when we we're still in Royal Oak in that space, we did a project. It was in 2012, I believe. Uh, called the Detroit Beautification Project with yep. Vogue and Matt Eaton and yep. Montana Cans. And they sponsored a bunch of paint and they flew out like 20 some of the world's biggest graffiti mm -hmm. artists, just absolute legends out here. Um, and we just smashed the city, you know, for a week. And that was kind of my first real, you know, experience into like a group of people all, it was definitely wasn't a festival, but it was a gathering. Um, and all these people at one time just painting together was like one of the most incredible experiences I've had, you know, until that point in art. And, uh, you know, from there, once we did that, we started getting other kind of mural opportunities and we became a sponsor of uh, Pow Wow Hawaii. So it was this festival out in, um, you know, it's out in, in Oahu. We got invited out to that. And we started going out there and doing a, a print show with the artists that were participating and really tight group of guys out there um, that we became friends with and did these shows in Hawaii year after year. Incredible experience, kind of saw how they really did it, um, you know, from like a more professional sponsorship side of things. Um, and so we learned a lot through those experiences, you know, and like logistically and um, kind of all the mechanics of uh, doing it right because they had a great mural festival and it was actually a festival um, where you know people were traveling to and mural festival was kind of a concept a lot of people didn't understand because it was a relatively new thing um, so that was really great and once we got back after a while you know we've been talking about doing something here again for a long time and I think it, we just had that moment where we're like, we're in the market. It's time we do our own thing. Um, we thought about bringing a powwow to Detroit, but it just didn't, it made more sense for us to just do it being there. So we engaged with uh, Eastern Market Corporation, and Dan Carmody, and, um, you know, they were on board and they loved the idea. So it was like, that helped us make it official. You know what I mean? And really... Um, get the blessing of kind of a, you know, a, an official that really put their stamp on it. We tried to get funding for it and thought it'd be easier to get sponsorship, but nobody wanted to really touch it that first year because, you know, uh, street art and everything, it was kind of some initiative <laughs> to clean things up. And it was like, no, sponsors really wanted to touch that at the beginning. So we just put up the money and we did it out of our own pockets and it worked. And, you know, I think people saw that and they saw it was uh, really good on the programming and just a respectful event. It wasn't people just coming to town to bomb everywhere. And it was really a great mix of artists. And I think, you know, we kind of proved ourselves with that. One, so was there ever a time where you were surprised? Like you were like, I can't believe they, they said this. Like, yeah. Like you went in, you asked for something and you thought, they're never going to agree to this. And you walked out like, whoa, like, that's insane. I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot of times. You know? It happens a lot. Right? Like, they're letting us do this. Um, they got that for us, you know what I mean? Like, right. didn't have to ask. Uh, yeah, there's been a ton of moments like that. And even the festival itself, it was that, hard, that first year, it was really hard to believe that they kind of, like, let us just – run wild down there and kind of paint the town. I mean, it was, it was pretty crazy. No, I remember hearing about it, like, cause I was involved. I, I, I knew you guys from the Detroit beautification project, but then when I heard about murals of the market and the scale of it, I honestly, I didn't believe it. Like at first I was just like, yeah, whatever, man. Like there's no way it's going to be the, what it is. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh shit. Like once again, like I was like, that really can, like, you can really get people to agree 
to let you paint on their buildings. I was like, definitely they're going to let us ride bikes all over this town, man. So do you guys, was yeah. there ever, was there a time, so every year when I did, you know, a slow roll, I, I, I always tried to like surprise myself or do something that sort of outdid what I did. Every year, did you guys sort of make a, a wish list of, okay, we did all this last year, but let's outdo that. I think so. I mean, in a way, um, but we never, we never really tried to outdo ourselves necessarily. We tried to just make it better, you know, and our, our festival dire uh, director, Rula David, we really pushed like kind of the diversity within the artists and she, you know, um, even with local and traveling, like really equalizing things between everybody, you know, cause at first we're like, all right, we're going to, you know, the, the artists that we bring in with the big names, like we're going to use that and really kind of like use that as a way to, to kind of drive things and then bring in bigger artists the next year. And by the time we got to the next year, we're like, well, that's all cool. But like the artists that are from Detroit, like they, you know, kind of like everything we do, we want to give everybody an equal opportunity and an equal shine. So it was really like finding ways to like, okay, we brought in, we flew in, you know, 15 artists and, and use 10 local artists the first year, like next year we're making it equal. And for every traveling artist, there's a local artist and we're going to put them right next to each other. You know what I mean? And we're going to put the lineup in alphabetical order this year and not do any kind of hierarchy based on who has the most fans or anything like that. And, um, you know, year after year, looking at the different parts of the neighborhood and why we were painting murals in certain parts, you know, and to, Think about people's safety when they're walking and maybe we could brighten this kind of like scary corner up a little bit and make it feel a little safer you know mm -hmm. so i don't think we're ever really necessarily trying to go bigger every single year and make it this huge thing it was really about doing it right because we've seen times when it goes bad um and it's it only benefits developers or um, you know, certain organizations that have a financial stake in things. And we didn't want it to be that, you know, it's inevitable to some degree, but we didn't want um, that to really be like the outcome of the project, you know? And I think, I think from what we did at work, you know, a lot of people built careers on painting murals that have done their first ones in murals in the market. So um, Absolutely. You know, they, they built their networks on painting right next to that guy, you know, it's got, half a million followers and he's known worldwide and you know now there's a relationship there between the two because they spent all weekend kind of painting next to each other and, um you know they're both learning things from each other that they didn't know before so uh, no man i think that's what we're, we're really trying to outdo ourselves and not you know and kind of the fame and glory side of it but no absolutely man you know they the, the saying is that the the real wealth is in the wealth that you create for others man and I, I can tell you, like, in my interviews over the 40 that I've done, the 40 plus, I've been amazed at how many people, were, like you said, did their first mural here, here in Detroit. Uh, a lot of people who are artists already had never done a mural. And you guys pushed that creative juice. And now they're mural artists, man. So that is something definitely to hang your hat on, man. Congratulations on that. Thank you. So, you, you know, so then we start getting so. When did the it start becoming apparent that every wall was almost covered? You know, you're, okay, when you start this, you're not thinking in five years we're going to have covered every single wall in Eastern Market. When did that start to knock on you guys' door that this is a reality that we are running out of space? Yeah. I mean, you know, probably the first couple, two, three years, you know, there was plenty. And I think the last, um, you know, couple were – starting to get a little thin and there are you know there are still some great walls there but not you know sometimes it, it, somebody might not be receptive to it somebody may have a reason they don't want it painted you know uh for whatever reason like there are a bunch of good ones that we still like probably won't be able to access or, or anything like that so you know um you can always kind of squeak one out and sometimes it's like i think there there's murals to be done in places that you don't necessarily see unless you really stop to kind of really look around at like the options and kind of what's there. You know what I mean? So it's easy to overlook like a gritty 
looking building with the paint falling off and everything like that and just kind of pass by it but we've been able to like find some cool opportunities um you know even last year we got or the last year we uh, did the festival we got a bunch of roller doors you know that we were able to paint and easter market kind of secured those for us so i think i think there are opportunities there's new stuff going up you know now and um I think we're starting, you know, we're starting to find uh, some options there. And as more people see kind of the benefits to it and having it on their business, they're having it on their property, like, you know, more people start to kind of come out of the woodwork that uh, maybe were hesitant before. So, yeah, yeah, man. So if anybody's been listening to this interview, what we've learned is you guys don't stay too content for too long. So you're doing murals in the market now. We, we got another project in the, in the works, which is Spotlight Detroit, man. I mean, which makes sense because at the time you guys were sort of you working out of your space away from here and everything was going on in the market. So now it's like, okay, what, what, you know, let's move it home. So when did the idea of the spotlight, you know, I keep asking when did the idea of, the, of this happen? Because like I said, I know how I do my thing where you guys just sitting around saying, you know, uh, it might work better if we had our own spot. I mean, how did that evolve? Yeah, well, I mean, Spotlight is really uh, Jesse and Rula's project, you know. So that was – and it's an idea that I think I can speak to it pretty well because, I, you know, it's kind of an evolution of the space and the gathering space and how people kind of connect around art, I think. Um, because for so many years we had galleries um, that we – you'd give free beer and wine and we'd get a huge crowd and, you know, you'd see a lot of the same people and you'd see new people and this whole community that we really like, you got, you get to know people and really build all these relationships. Um, and a lot of times, you know, those people aren't necessarily coming to buy art, but they want to be part of the scene. They want to see it. They want to experience it like everybody else. And we wanted to have a spaces that were open to anybody coming in, didn't feel like some stuffy, highbrow gallery that was intimidating to walk into it's like we're a space that people can come experience it have a good time have a glass of wine have a beer um and just that's it you know and we obviously we need to sell stuff to keep things going but in developing the online component we realized we didn't necessarily have to rely on the physical in-person sales to have those events you know so it really allowed us to kind of create the event and then have an opportunity to sell it online too so out of that came kind of this a need for like a multi-purpose space you know that's can be a gallery it could be a movie screening it could be a live show it could be an experiential kind of experience space like the spotlight space and the way you know that's being set up is like that's what it's going to be for um and then you know, they got a liquor license so they can sell beer and wine and liquor. So that kind of takes that part of like, okay, if you're just giving the free beer and wine out to people, it's getting expensive. But now you can come and like pay for beer, pay for wine. You can have that whole experience and that helps to, to fund it and help, you know, to do the next one. So I think it's a really great model. Um, and I think there'll be a lot of opportunities for all kinds of different stuff in there that's, you know, different. No, oh, man. I mean, I'm excited about it. Every time I go by there, I just think of it as being just another 323 East, but just bigger. It's just another big community space uh, where people can come hang out. And that's sort of the, the underlying thing that we always stick to is community here. It's all about whether it's the art community or the community that the art uh, is going up in. Um, you know, that's what we're all about. You know, when as the creative director, you know, is there, has there ever been a time where you said, oh, my God, I can't believe, like, what, what, what is one thing specifically that you said, I didn't think that that would ever happen, they, they, that we could ever do this? Like, what is your aha crazy moment? Like, I can tell you personally, the first time I had 10,000 people on bikes on a Monday night in the streets of Detroit, that was a moment for me that I'll never forget. Do you have one of those? I mean, I got, yeah, there's a bunch of them. It's like it's... <laughs> You know, as things go on, it's like, you know, more of those, you can, they kind of outdo each other sometimes, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's like I remember the, the first three, the experience at 323 three East when Ron English came and painted, um, put up a bunch of wheat paste on the side of our building, and he blew up this giant 
10 foot inflatable grin and let it go up into the air and he climbed up on the billboard and he took over the billboard and the cops came and arrested him and it was like <laughs> for me that was the moment where like oh wow I, like i wrote my um i had to write a thesis in art school uh my senior thesis and i wrote it on him and shepherd ferry so it was like to have this guy that i looked up to it was a huge artist you know um come and do something at our spot and get to meet him like that was when i was like oh shit this is like we you know we did something really special with this <laughs> you know what i mean and then with one time run um i uh like a personal moment to me was working with the artist brandon boy you know what i mean yeah he was, he was like somebody that i listened to incubus yeah. in high school and I know those albums, like, you know, they're like a part of the soundtrack to that certain period of your life. Yep. And, you know, we ended up working with him and, and getting to go to his house and just like meeting with him over art and stuff was a moment where my head almost exploded. And I got, I rarely get like fanboy, but it was hard to hold, hold it back, you know, because <laughs> it's just like, who would have ever thought that, you know, things would have come full circle around from like that 14 year old kid to like, here you know so that was like a whole hybrid moment of art and life and, and everything else that like that one that one got me pretty good nah that's awesome man like like i said i know coming from where we came from man you know the accomplishments you know, accomplishments you can rack them up but there's those moments that mean more to us than sometimes other people you know what i mean so i knew you know uh has there ever been a time i gotta ask you where you actually like sat back and like I'm a, I'm a baby, man, and I'm, I'm emotional. You ever sit back and you just, like, let it out? You're like, wow, man, like, what I've done is, you know, probably bigger than you ever imagined anything you would take it. Did you, have you ever had that moment and just, like, soaked it up? I think so, yeah. I mean, I, there's, there's definitely been those times where it's like it kind of hits you. Um, and it's hard to take yourself out of the moment sometimes because we're just in it every day, and it's work, and we're – grinding it out and it's not always glamorous like the you know the, the collector sees on the website or on the social or anything like that and it's just, like it's hard um but there have been those moments where you're just like i can't believe like we've done all of this you know or like you see i've had moments like seeing opportunities in other people's like careers and things like that and haven't seen where they kind of started with us too and it's like just to be a part of that, you know, story is uh, crazy, you know. I remember a um, crazy experience I had um, working with uh, the artist Nichos, and I went out to uh, Austria, to his hometown, to do a pop-up show in a little gallery space he had. And uh, I remember we were out one night, and we were meeting up with some of his friends at the bar, and the friend pulls up and he's like all excited and he pulls out this VNA magazine out of his bag and he's like, look, man, I got this, you know, uh, the VNA magazine was a magazine out of the UK that was like street art, you know, based pretty, pretty, uh, you know, well known. And he pulls it out and he's all excited about it. And I remember just kind of going, oh, shit. And I had him open it up and I flipped to this page and there was a picture of me and Jesse with this interview that we had just done with him and, it. and this kid's head almost exploded and he asked me for an autograph. And I was just like, holy shit. I'm in Vienna, Austria. This kid's excited about this thing. And I'm in this magazine that he just got was so hype about. It was like, you know, sometimes you don't realize anyone else is paying attention sometimes. It's just like, I don't know, you know. Um, you don't get the feedback every day or anything or get to see what, you see it on social, but man, that was like something that blew my mind. It was like, I can't believe that just happened. You know, that kid couldn't believe it either. It was wild. And you'll always be able to pull from that when that, when those nights, when you're like well, tired, beat down, you can think about that moment and be like, that's what pushes you forward, man. That, yeah, is, that is what keeps you going, man. You guys have made an amazing mark in the world, man. And I don't know if anybody's ever put it to you like that, but like, honestly, the, not just Detroit, but the mark that you have left on the world, man, has been an amazing thing. And I thank you for that. Um, thank you, man. Appreciate that. What, you know, what's up? I know we can't, you know, talk too much about, but there is a future that, you know, 
we can what's going on man you know like that's what we always ask we talk about the past the present and we got to talk about the future what's going on yeah there, there's some stuff bubbling there you know i mean after this last year you know we know obviously how tough tough everything was for everybody and it was uh you know tough not doing the mural festival this year and taking a break and uh it was a good kind of a reset for us you know um to kind of figure out where things were at and just take a pause after five years of doing it and really kind of take a look at you know what's the future of this thing and um you know we know there is a future after this and things are going to turn around and people are going to want to get out more than ever you know i hope and um, I think there's still a great opportunity for public art, so especially within the city of Detroit. So I can't, you know, we're not talking details yet, but um, we're definitely have been having a lot of really great conversations with a lot of great people about, um, you know, the mural festival coming back in 2021. So that that's what's up. I that's all I need out of you. I'm not an investigative reporter, so I'm not going to keep digging. I know I'll get the information when it is time for me to get it. Dan, yes. my man, dude, I am so excited that we got to talk, man. Like I said earlier, whenever we hang out, it's always like me, you, and like 20 other people or five other people, man. We need to, when this is all over, you and me need to hang out. We're both dads, like I said earlier, man. I, I, got, no a six year old, I got a six-year-old, so I can give you a few tips on, you know, what's to come <laughs> and, uh, Let's just link, dude, and I, I'm excited to see what's happening, brother. Well, sounds great, man. Yeah, I really appreciate it and all the work, you know, you've done and all these interviews have been so amazing and really, like, pulling so many great stories out of all the people we've worked with. And, man, we really appreciate you and all the stuff we've done. And I think we're going to develop a pretty cool kind of program as we go, you know, forward that we can kind of, you know, fill people in on here, uh, hopefully pretty soon, you know. And I think it's going to be it's going to be a good year. Dude, I'm, I'm too emotional these days. I'm about to start crying again. Thank you guys. You, you have no idea what you've done for me, man. This, this relationship is not going anywhere, man. Thank you again, Dan. Go hang out with your, your family, man. Tell Michelle I said, hey. I will. And, uh, I'll see you in the future, brother, real soon. Sounds good. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for watching and uh, tuning in here. Looking All forward right, to seeing bro. you guys again soon. Yeah, man. Talk to you soon, brother. All right. Take care. All right, later. Bye. Man, let me see if this is going to work. How I get there. There it is. Wow. You know, and I mean this, dude. Like, Dan is a rad, rad dude. And, you know, I don't spend enough time with him because he just likes to be this dude who's just observing and, and making moves, man. But I got to dig deeper and get to know that dude a lot more. Thanks, you guys, man. It has been the craziest, I don't even know, 40, 40 weeks, man, of doing this. I think we took one week off, maybe one or two. We have, no, not even. We have met and interviewed some of the most amazing artists in the world. It has been a pleasure to do this. I'm not saying this is not goodbye. This is only a break. I feel a little teary right now. You know what I'm saying? This is just a break. We shall be back, and we'll be doing some other stuff. Trust me. Paige and I are working on some stuff. We're going to, just like the Merrill Festival, this has to evolve. So we're going to evolve and do some different stuff. So stay tuned. You, will be, you can see all our videos uh, on the Ride Detroit YouTube channel. Trust me, that's not going anywhere. You'll be able to find that stuff. I'll be posting all that stuff. So... Because I think a lot of you didn't get to see the early stuff. So I'm going to post all that stuff so you can see.